1038. Okay, I'm going to try to make a... Uh, this is going to be part five of my novel... Uh, Jihad of Java Jills. This is part five. And uh, I'll let you know that it's a sequel to my uh, novel that I first published to Amazon a long time ago. Uh, actually, it was five years ago. No, wait, was it? Over five years ago, yeah. And it actually, someone actually bought it. Hey, someone actually bought that. Of all the 80, 80 plus books and novels and I published to, to Amazon, someone actually bought Trucker Jihad. Someone actually bought a novel of mine. Yeah, woo. Got $12 for it. Yeah. Anyway, I thought I would uh, continue reading this. By the way, uh, the reason why I'm breaking up into segment, segments is because, uh, okay, this is going to be part five, but if you want to look, look for part six, if you think, oh, that sounds pretty good, be having the section of the novel in written form, you can have it, in, which will be on this uh, DVD that you're looking at, or CD. No, it's a DVD. If you're looking at this, it's on a DVD. Uh, the CD will contain uh, a bigger portion of the novel than what you have here. But if you think, hey, that sounds good, then type into your web browser Project Monster Zero or Project Messages from the Edge of Earth, and you should find others who've done the exact same thing you're doing right now. You can collaborate, find, try to find out how this story ends. And um, uh, maybe download those videos that are on here that expose Islam, and maybe we can help bring it down before we're all into Sharia law with our patities up in the air five times a day to keep from paying the jizzy tax to keep from being killed. So anyway, here it goes here. All right. All right, Brian sadly, uh, yeah. Uh, the female cop responded back with, we're an addict or, or boozer. It's always someone else's fault. They play victim to win sympathy out of you so you will uh, give them more money for booze or whatever. Brian Lee Sally uh, uh, shook his head for, yes, I understand. You need to uh, put a restraining order on him because you are only enabling him, said the male cop. An hour later, Brian tried to uh, sleep but found himself pacing. He had guns but uh, didn't want to use one of, he didn't want to use one on his uh, friend. Right when he thought he was ready for sleep, his cell phone rang. It was the cowboy telling him to meet him at the canal so he could uh, cave in his face, cave in a skull with his fist. Cave in his skull with his fist. Brian remained calm and said, now why would you want me to do that when you say I didn't hurt you because I punched like a pussy? Yeah. You put three nuts in my head, asshole. I'm going to kill you. Oh, so I don't put punch like a pussy. Can you get your story straight, please? Fucker, get out here to the canal now. Brian smiled and said, no, this, uh, quote, fag needs his beauty sleep. Remember, um, remember the gun I uh, shot the Koran in front of you with uh, on, the side of the, on the side of the road? Uh, well, I reloaded it. So, get me to uh, fight you, okay? And with that, Brian hung up and went to bed after making sure his car alarm was working. Instead of sleeping, he tossed and turned, worrying that he might have destroyed a 60, well, actually it's not 60, because the cowboy in this, his friend is not, is, is actually under 60. Gotta change that. Should be nearly 60 year friendship with Willard. Then, remembering that he was dying of liver cancer, he thought to himself, I'm going to sell this place dirt cheap, live up in the Berkeley Hills, and die up there before my million dollar rent is due. Brian finally uh, fell to sleep thinking that the only good thing about cancer was that it allowed one to get some of their life in order. In the morning, in the morning Brian found one of his tar car tires flat. No doubt about 
No doubt by the cowboy, he thought. Well, I'm not planning on uh, going anywhere just yet. After hiding the guns in what he felt was a place in the house, no one would find them should they break in. Brian had a for sale sign. His plan was to sell the family house for half price, including all the furniture, books, and belongings, not even taking the family albums, realizing they were all going to end up in landfills, whether he took them with him or not. As he put the albums in the crawl space of his old family home, he went through all his old videotapes mostly of him reading his books and stories, uh, books and diaries. He recalled that he looked pretty good looking when he was in his 20s, yet he also realized that, uh, but he also remembered seeing some videos of his younger self picking his nose on camera and, well, licking the snot off his fingers. Brian tried to remember that scene most of the time, so he wouldn't, he wouldn't mind the fact that they were all going to be landfill bound. Then, in one box of tapes, Brian came upon a video that said, My Dad's 50th. Brian, Brian didn't uh, play it, for he uh, had seen it a few times before, where all... where all his close relatives, let's see what time is it? Yeah. All his close, close relatives in it were still alive, young and healthy. Even the quote, the cowboy was in a seat or two, even looking, uh, never, left, never looking better. Brian felt if he played it now, he'd burst out, he burst out into violent sobbing. So, instead of playing it, he put it in the VCR for anyone who might want to see it, as doubtful as that would be. On the tape was his granny reading her poems. One of them was of her reading this, the poem, I said, a little prayer for, I said a little prayer for you today. Such a poem was later claimed authorship by several people. At the time, Brian thought for sure that his granny had written that poem and that it got picked up when she sent it in, in it, she sent it into a poetry publishing company that published unknown you know, amateur poets like his granny, thus making it so someone could steal such a poem and claim it as their own. As the years went by, a man with the last name of Zamboni, the creator of the skating rink cleaners, was the one whose name came up the most in authorship for such a poem. Zamboni, being the true author, increased further when Brian later found a book of poetry he had made for his granny years ago that contained all the poems Brian believed she had composed. Only I said a little prayer for you today, was literally cut out of the book, possibly by his granny. Still, since he believed she wrote it at a certain time, Brian remembered a very low time in his life when he was trying, trying to get his Class A license to become a long distance trucker and happened to come upon that poem in plaque form inside his trucking teacher's office cubicle. That's my grandmother's poem, he told his teacher, pointing to it with tears in his eyes. The poem was given to his teacher as a gift from someone. You're a liar, said the teacher with all seriousness in his voice. Being that Brian later discovered that his granny possibly cut out the poem from the book he made her, he felt that, in a way, his teacher was right in calling him a liar. Still, though, for Mr. Richardson, seeing such a poem on the wall, he took to be his granny's, uh, granny's at that time was to him as if his granny came back from the spirit world to comfort him 
and shine a little light in the darkness that maybe, possibly, there aren't any coincidences and that there is an ultimate plan for us all, however bleak it might appear while we live. Brian Richardson took off to Berkeley to die in a nice place looking out over the bay. Will wonders never cease, he asked himself, getting lucky with uh, renting a small million dollar home with a nice view. The only thing he took with him were five laptops, a camera, and the DVDs. He changed his mind about only taking those when he thought of adding something later to, the li to his live leak account, making him go back for a family album and, a video, and, and video of himself with the, the cowboy in happier times. In happier times. Oh, shoot, what time is it now? Oh, God. Yeah. No, I think I can go one more minute here. In happier times. Yeah, okay. He decided that in his last remaining weeks of living, he would write a science fiction. Eh? Eh? I gotta stop it here. Oh, no! I can. I have one more minute. Actually, I have 30 seconds to go. Okay. Yeah. He would write a science fiction novel that would expose Islam. Brian noticed that on his Aloha Snack Bar DVDs and CDs, that whether they were CD or DVD, they, they all had blank spaces on the edges of them, allowing him to add more video to the DVD versions and writings to the CD versions. With such a case, he would have his DVDs having different parts of his novel read onto them in video form and different parts of his novel in computer print burned onto the data deficient CDs. I think that is time to, yes, I gotta stop it here.